Hello. Aha! We're good. How's it going, everybody? <clears throat> My mic seems a little bit loud. Hey, son of a sofa man. Nice to see you on stream. Second time in Community Workshop, which is excellent. Yeah, there's the problem. Okay. Fix the mic gain. We should be all good now. Things should sound good. You should hear some soft music in the background. If you don't, let me know. Oh, I'm super happy to be hosting these. Um, no music? You lie. No soft music? Well, that's some horseshit, I can tell you that. Oh, it is? Okay, cool. It's just soft. I can bump it up a little bit. There we go. I can probably also bump up. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. That should be a little bit louder, yeah? Let me know what the audio levels are like for you guys, but hopefully you can hear it. Hopefully it's pleasant. Hopefully it's a good backdrop for what we're going to be doing tonight, which is Community Workshop. I'm so excited. Um, son of a sofa man, you missed a really good one on Friday, uh, which was super fun. We had uh, Dr. Drub bring in a uh, Shield Warrior subclass that he was working on. It was a super, super cool. Um, you could fight with two shields, no sword required, and it was awesome. Uh, and it was super fun to just riff on that. And that's in the same dashboard that uh, we first generated together when we worked on evolving magic items. So it's building. We got two things in there now. Um, and I'm, I mean, I'm just excited to see the whole sort of list of things that we're going to work on together uh, over the course of time. And hopefully it becomes a really cool resource for everyone, not just who participates in the stream, but also anyone who finds it on Reddit or anywhere else. Um, so let's go over some starting, just some pre pre activity things. Um, for anyone who is joining us for the first time, I would like to just reiterate the ethos of the stream, why we're doing this. Um, number one, we love D and D number two, DM prep is a lonely activity. And I'm very interested in seeing what collaborative creativity is like online and so far the experiment is going very well um it's it's possible so that's validation number one but two it's extremely interesting it's very different than prepping with someone live in person um it's got a different vibe to it but it also has the benefit of having a lot more people involved at once than what you would normally do so again i've had a career as a game designer i've worked with a lot of people um in a collaborative environment and um, this is a whole different thing, and it's really, really cool. Um, so I'm hoping to bring some of my know-how of creativity and being collaborative and, you know, checking your ego at the door and being able to kill your babies and not being too precious about things and being kind to others while also still representing your own ideas um, and bringing that to bear and combining it with the raw creative power that you guys have, which so far has been amazing. Um, so if you're into the idea of collaborating with others and working on cool D&D things together, stick around. We do this Mondays and Fridays. Uh, Mondays are 7 p.m. Pacific. Fridays are 12 o'clock, more of a lunch stream, also Pacific. Um, you need a mini DM prep section for myself. Yeah, seriously. Um, well, you guys are, you know, you guys are the VIPs. You guys are the re repeat customers. Um, so your hand you know, fingerprints are going to be all over everything we do. And I don't know, I think both of you experience this, but, you know, I like to leave collaborator, collaborator set uh, lists inside of each of the things that we work on. So everyone knows that Son of a Sofa Man and Root of All Beers are going to be all over the thing that we work on tonight. And who knows how that's going to, you know, proliferate throughout the D&D community. Mm. Um, other things to talk about... Um, if you didn't see uh, my bonus stream of my girlfriend cutting my hair, it, it's worth watching the first 20 minutes while I freak out like a little baby. It's pretty entertaining for others. Terrifying for me. Um, and you can see all my friends on Zoom laughing at me. Uh, so that was a little thing we did over the weekend. And I'm groomed. She did a great job. 
I think. She only made one mistake. You guys want to see? I don't know if you can see, but right here. I don't need to see it anymore. Might have grown in. But it wasn't perfect. Yeah, whatever, man. It was terrifying. Okay, I don't. I could lose all of this. This is. It, it was at risk. Okay, and then my streaming career would be over because I'd be bald, and I would not look good bald, frankly. So, whew, we almost lost the stream that day, guys. We didn't. So, we're in luck. It's a hell week to grow in. Yeah, my hair actually does go really fast. It's uh, one of the privileges of being brown and hairy, I guess. Um, other people I want to uh, call out. Uh, one is Nerd Strong Jim. They are on Twitch. They are my gym here in LA, but they are quickly with COVID and everything moving online. If you uh, want to work out or want to be active, I highly suggest you check them out. They're great people. Um, and then, hey, five minutes, I need to make some chocolate milk. You, you take your time, man. Um, although you might miss the nominating of ideas. I'm just saying. Risks, right? Risk reward. Uh, other people to check out Gaming Brew. Gaming Bruce. I always get it wrong. It's Gaming Brews. They are a DD and d channel, also small. Um, they run their campaigns online, and they also do prep for their campaigns like once a week. Uh, the guy's super nice. Very cool. Check him out if you want more D&D content. Um, and then last uh, is Han Cholo, H-A-N-C-H-O-L-O. They sell um, D&D-themed jewelry. They have a license from Wizards of the Coast officially to make all kinds of cool stuff. I own a bunch of their pieces. I don't have them with me right here. Um, but they recently got their shop broken into, which was terrible. Uh, they lost hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of original pieces that were precious metals, um, various other things. I don't know, jewelry terms, but um, they're very, very nice people. And um, you definitely want to check out what they've got going on. So go to their website, honcholo.com. Uh, and if you feel like buying something, do it because they will bend over backwards uh, to make any customer happy right now. Um, and as they should, they, they always do. Oh, you changed your name. Anchin Turtle. I, I, I remember you were like bouncing back and forth between that. I've seen you as Hayato on Discord. Lots of names. But it's all good with me. I'm just going to call you Turtle. That's cool. Um, That's it. Uh, that's, that's all the pre-stream announcements I got. Uh, the other thing, I haven't put it on here. Uh, but you know what? We will we'll go ahead and switch over to. Now nah, we won't yet. Um, but we are at thirty-eight followers, and I would love to get to fifty, only because we become then a Twitch affiliate channel, which is awesome. Um, that allows us to do a bunch of things we can't do right now. I don't have a full list, but you know, throw us a follow if you're new. Um, and I think that's it. I think that's truly it. So. Without further ado, that might be like the quickest we've gotten into the main portion of the evening. Let's do some community workshop. I'm super excited. I hope you're excited. Um, I'll switch the music up and everything once we get started. But the first step, as always, is to figure out what we want to work on tonight. I don't know, but uh, let me just put it to chat. Um, what do you guys want to work on? It can be anything. It can be something you have already started working on. It can be something you have never worked on and just have had a shower thought about and would like to explore with the community because throwing brains at it is fun. It could be just wait till, wait till your stimulus arrives on the 24th. Uh, that would be great, but we have to hit affiliate for that. We can't get subscriptions until we're affiliate. So hopefully, you know, well, I hope your stimulus checks arrives as soon as possible. I got mine last week and I feel very fortunate. Uh, I know a lot of people haven't gotten there, so I hope yours comes soon um and uh hopefully we get to that 50 tonight that would be awesome uh i don't have the follower count up right now but it's 38 and uh, i'll have it up later on um but as i said we we got to figure out what we want to work on and we are open for business let's do it so could be again it could be something for you as a dm it could be if you're a player and you've never dm'd and you want some you know ideas to throw out about your player character that's totally cool i'm happy to work on that um if there is any kind of homebrew you're working on, throw that out as a contender. Um, I know that Son of a Sofa Man, you had said there was something that you thought uh, would be a good candidate for that. So I'd love to see that. Uh, would love to see something from you, Turtle. We can talk about both of the options. Um, and then uh, just throw out some more ideas for inspiration. Um, 
feel free to mention a uh, magic item. Feel free to mention an adventure. Feel free to mention um, some narrative. Feel free to mention some exploration, uh, questing, you know, like exploration terrain type exploration stuff. I, I feel like people don't do enough of that in D&D &D and I love doing that stuff. Um, feel free to do, you know, nominate a combat encounter that you have coming up. Feel free to um, bring up like some world building. We can work on a city, a town, an NPC, a minor NPC, a major NPC, your big bad evil guy, whatever. Um, all of that is kosher for tonight. And... All you guys got to do is, you know, put something forward and we'll talk about it. And of course, as usual, if there's nothing. I have some things um, that I think would be fun to work on as well together if we can. Typing sucks. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, we're not in that. You know, you would think that by now we wouldn't have to type anymore. We could just Westworld it. You know, everything is done through UI and voice and etc. You know, stuff like that. Um, I'm getting texts from people being like, she did such a good job on your hair. Well, it's true. She did. Uh, you could always use discord. Yeah, it's true. Okay. So I also posted on Reddit tonight, a couple other places. Oh, my my post on r slash Dungeons and Dragons was removed because I need a flare. Oh. Let's go do that, shall we? Let's go do that. Um, the following flares are available. Homebrew, looking for group, OC, art suggestion, advice needed. Uh, we'll say OC, I guess. This, everything we do here is going to be OC, which is great. A streamer room on our discord oh like you want to type in discord or you mean uh like a voice room use reddit's interface pick one uh how do i do this i've never done this before just kidding i have oh a voice room roger well we do have a voice room um you're right, it's not specifically for the stream, but. But are you saying that that OC means original content? So it could be an original character, but it could also be anything else that you come up with. Uh, edit post. I don't see that. That's not it. Flare, there it is. OC, boom. Fly, save. All right, should get restored. I hope. I really have no idea. I posted on r slash Dungeons and Dragons, r slash DD Next, r slash DD, r slash DM Toolkit. I don't know if you guys know, but my post on DM Toolkit got 50 upvotes. Apparently, people there are interested, which is great. So I posted there again. Uh, is there ever a scenario where an event causes everyone's role to trade with each other? That's interesting. That's very interesting. I mean, role meaning what? Role meaning like you switch the characters that you're playing at the table. Like I give you your character, you give my character. Or role as in, um, as in, I mean, I guess that's the only one I can think of. Or role as in like my role within the campaign, still my character. I would imagine you mean character swapping. No, I've never actually experienced that, but that would be wild. A um, couple of things I can think of. Oh, your class. Change your class. Oh, interesting. Um, there isn't a, a, a an official channel for that. Um, or an official like method by which that might happen. The closest I can think of is multi-classing. So, you know, if you are a barbarian and you're party member is a wizard you can maybe say that you were inspired by them and then you start multi-classing uh into wizard and then you start taking levels in wizard which is pretty cool multi-classing is super interesting to me it, it really opens up the character a lot in terms of complexity because the combinations you can have i mean you can in theory multi-class any number of classes you want as long as you meet all the requirements for them 
So the permutations are incredible. Um, and they do lead to very unique character combinations. Um, aside from multi-classing, I don't think there's a way. Um, one thing you could do, though, is you, you know, I've done this in campaigns in the past where I've actually done brain swaps or mind swaps or um, taking over other characters. So or even flashbacks. Um, a couple weeks ago, we did a flashback for a character and everybody stepped into totally different roles. Um, so that was interesting, but yeah, I don't know. I think, I think multi-classing is the closest you can get to. Have you ever multi-classed MIGs? If you haven't, it's super fascinating. I mean, just the idea of doing like, uh, rogue slash barbarian, you can use reckless attack to give you advantage and force a sneak attack because all you have to have for a sneak attack is advantage. So at any time, boom. Pop sneak attacks anytime you want. It's pretty wild. How do you resolve death in a flashback? That's a good question. Um, in a flashback, the way that I've done it is uh, we basically had a character um, whose father had died a while ago and nobody knew how. And so they had encountered this sort of mystical entity called the Night Watcher party had. And they went to this mystical entity asking for answers. And the entity decided to show them instead of telling them and popped them into um, the father, the dead father and his companions. So it didn't really matter too much that uh, any character could die because they weren't characters that were going to show up. They were characters from like 20 years ago. So if one of the bodyguards died and that was... Those were the people that the, that the rest of the party were playing. Um, didn't really matter that much. And it was only for one session as well. So it wasn't a big deal. I think it depends on your flashback. If you're flashing back as an existing character. And then you get into a combat encounter and they die. Uh, I would just fudge it. Honestly, I would be like, I, I know you don't die. So I'm just going to do my best to not kill you. Like you could actually argue you're basically just playing fate at that point. Right? Normally when you're DMing, you're just educating the world and the rules of the world. But if you are playing a flashback, you know to some degree what happens. And so, you know, railroading things a little bit to make sure someone doesn't die, I think is pretty valid, to be honest. Um, all right, so we got nine people in here. I'm going to put the question out again. Uh, for everyone that's new, remember this is a collaborative D&D prep stream. We can work on anything and everything. We've done this a couple times now to great success. We've had a ton of fun. And this is, um, you know, I think our third or fourth community workshop. So now is the time, if you're new here, to put, and if you're not new here, definitely do this. Put forward some ideas for something you might want to work on. It could be... Um, something you have already started working on, or it could be something you have not started working on and just had an idea for, and you want to see what happens when you throw it in the mix uh, with a bunch of brilliant minds. Just kidding. We're not brilliant, but we are creative, and that's what matters. And we'll have a lot of really good time bashing on whatever you throw at us. So um, put it out there. Participate. And again, this stream is all about us working together. That means being nice to each other, being accepting of each other's ideas, and making sure that whatever we choose to work on we do so with a collaborative, open spirit. And I will guide us through that experience. And we will add it to our wonderful database of community workshop creations. All right, catching up on chats. Uh, idea, how about brainstorming some exotic locale, a population center located in the canyons, for example. I like that. We have never done a world building community workshop. That sounds great. I'm going to add it to the list of ideas I'm keeping track of here. Where do we put that? Put that here. Uh, exotic locales. That'd be fun. We can come up with a big list of them. Um, just like blue sky open brainstorm. And then we can like drill down into one that we think is super interesting and then like flush it out with a bunch of stuff. That sounds super fun. Um, I would leave it open-ended with heavy. And okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Any other ideas? That sounds like a fun one. I'm going to give it another two to three minutes. And if not, we're just going to run with that one because that sounds awesome. 
Um, I had another one. Ooh, idea. Collaborate on an ancient temple devoted to a long lost deity. It's a classic. Love that one. Ancient temple devoted to a long lost deity. Yeah, and that'd be fun too. You could split it into the dungeon part of it. You know, how does the dungeon flow? How does the space sort of get created? I always like to start with what rooms are in that dungeon. No, that's not true. I start with the purpose of the dungeon and the purpose of the temple and its themes. And then I drill down into what kind of rooms it might have. And then we can talk about all kinds of fun NPCs that we'd like to fill it with and combat. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. What else? What else we got? Throw it at me. You're still open for ideas. Open for business. We'll pick at like 7.30. Three minutes. Do we want a fantasy theme or a sci-fi theme? Holy shit, I didn't think about that. I'm down for sci-fi. You know, I've always thought I would love to work on a sci-fi campaign and it's always been fantasy. Um, but there is nothing about Community Workshop that says we cannot work on sci-fi. As Honestly, it's just a different form of fantasy in the future. Whatever. That'd be super cool. I'm just as much of a, fan, a sci-fi dork as a fantasy dork. And I don't know about you guys, but, you know, I think one lends himself to the other. Uh, I would select a theme of the god itself and the morality of the god shape the temple to said god. Yeah, for sure. Wait, are you... Do you have two... You have Root of All Beers and you have Ancient Turtle, but you're the same person, right? Or you're not? No, you're not. Are you? I'm confused. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I thought you guys were the same person. Maybe it's because it's you're both green in chat. Well, I'm glad that you're both here. Great. I don't think Ancient Turtle I've seen you for a couple of streams. Unless you've just been lurking, which is great. I'm, I'm happy to have you back. Um... So, so far we've got exotic locales and ancient temple devoted to a long lost deity. Um, any other ideas for what anybody would like to work on? Um, oh, it's all good, man. You know, show up when you can. Show up when you feel like being creative and having a good time or, or just lurking and, you know, watching other people being creative. That's totally cool, too. It's all good. Um, also, how dare you miss it? Just kidding. Uh, no, that's no, cool. You guys can both be green. That, that wasn't really a big deal. Um, what else, y'all? One minute left. One minute before we pick. Um, class association. <laughs> Whatever. Um, any other ideas for what we want to work on? We got nine people in here right now, and that's a lot of brain power that we can work on something, which is great. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, anything that I would want to add to this list. I think the only thing would be... I have a character that I need some help. I'm kind of stuck uh, trying to figure out his backstory. So, you know, I would love to get some assistance on that as well. Uh, all right, let's pick. Um, I think based on what we've done in the past, uh, <coughs> personally, my interest level, I think, is higher in the exotic locales. I think that's super cool. I think I've... I've done, you know, ancient deity, ancient temple prep before, but, you know, I think I'm super down to do exotic locales. I think, uh, I think we'll roll with that one. Can you come up with some monsters when the time comes? Yeah, absolutely. You mean for the exotic locales or just in general? Because we can also totally work on a monster idea, 100%. I would love for, um, for all of you guys to sort of, you know, keep a list of the things that pop into your head uh, when you're thinking about the stream when we're not actually streaming, you know? Kind of like shower thoughts, they happen. Um, write them down. Put them in Discord immediately, and I'll write them down. And uh, you can make sure that, you know, we get it captured and we put it on the list for the next stream. Airship? I have an airship. But we can come up with a better airship. I don't know why I said an airship. That was irrelevant. Um... Okay, cool. Absolutely. I mean, exotic locales, like, we can add tons of monsters in there. That sounds awesome. Good at making concept art, but you don't have drawing skills. Oh, for details? Hmm. Oh, well, you know, concept art, you don't need details. You just need to sort of capture the vision for things. All right. 
Let's do exotic locales. That sounds dope. Um, here's what I'm thinking. We'll start with uh, Blue Sky Brainstorm, which is to say no bad ideas. We're just going to throw shit at the wall. This is how we usually start. Um, we want everyone to really feel a sense of energy. We want to feel like we can say anything that comes to, into our head, which we can. And we want to feel like there's no criticism at this stage, um, even constructive. Because the idea with Blue Sky Brainstorms is to just drum up that energy level, drum up that inspiration level to the point where you feel like you can throw anything out. And you just never know what someone else's ridiculous idea is going to do to your own brain and what great idea it, it's going to make pop into your head. Because in my opinion, creativity is always sort of the, the collision of the entropic collision of random thoughts um, colliding in your head to form new ideas. And so the more new shit, the more crazy shit is being thrown out there, the more likely you are to have new ideas. Um, and so that's the goal of the Blue Sky Brainstorm. So let's do it. Um, all right. So I'm going to switch over to our work view. And we're going to get started. All right, let's do it. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Community Workshop. Let's do some fucking shit. Oh my God, their ideas are already coming. I haven't even made the page yet. Exotic locales. Now it's a race. Who can go faster? Your brain or my typing? Let's find out. Swamp with fiery geysers. Remember, I don't write down whose idea was whose because it doesn't matter. We're all going to touch it at some point. Um, uh, a desert with shifting sands. Fuck yeah. Never the same place twice. I like it. That's fucking cool. A snowy city at the peak of a mountain. I like it. That's very cool. I saw some stuff like that um, in Horizon Zero Dawn uh, when I was playing it earlier today, and that place has some really cool exotic locales. Um, teaching you on how to become a great DM because he, she is the one to control the game and I want to learn more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Please come and learn from the community. We're all, you know, have something different to offer, um, and I'm sure we can learn a lot from you as well. Uh, I got another one, a cliff permeated with holes and tunnels like Swiss cheese. We need some more energetic music for this, y'all. How about Rainbow Road Lo-Fi Ro Lo Remix? Let's do it. Okay. Um. <laughs> but on the peak, it has a titan in it. Yes. On the peak, it has a titan in it. Tell me what a titan is. I don't even know what a titan is. What is that? Like a big Greek... Mythology kind of titan, like uh, the ones stuck in Tartarus or whatever. All right, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Exotic locales. Give me some more stuff. Um, oh, sorry. Let me uh, zoom in for you guys so you can see it. Better? Great. All right. Uh, ooh, undercity that's built on the ceiling of a giant cave because the floor is stripped. Boiling water. I like it. Undercity. Built on the ceiling Woo! of a giant cave because floor is straight up boiling water. I love it. I actually, uh, I have one for a, you guys that I tried to implement into a campaign and I don't think I did a great job, but it's cool, which is a uh, an underground or under dark mountain range that um, is completely upside down. So like things hang. And it's mountain sized because it's in the Underdark. And so there's literally civilizations living in upside down mountains that have built and and there's lots of flying creatures um, and stuff. But it's like literally the size of a mountain. But in reality, they're giant stalactites. And they've just over millennia formed into mountain sized stalactites. Um, giant underground or uh, underground mountain range that is actually or actually gigantic stalactites. Uh, I don't know if that's stalactites or stalagmites. I have no idea. Um, a mountain. Oop, 
mountain into which is embedded a giant, an enormous giant axe left by an ancient titan. I love it. I've seen a map like that, actually. I've seen a D&D map that someone created on a Patreon. It's super cool. It's like this big map, and then like half the map is taken up by this giant weapon. It's super cool. Um, oh, here we go. Um, a city... East Air Temple from Last Airbender. Probably. I don't know. I haven't watched it. Um, a city atop a mesa. Only access is via air or one of a few tunnels accessible from ground level. That's cool. Everybody know what a mesa is? It's like a giant, it's like a, you know, a mountain, but it's got like a super flat top. Um, which is pretty cool. It reminds me of, of, um, not Thunderbrew, Thunder Bluff in World of Warcraft. It's built on a big mesa, right? It's like a really tall mesa and it's totally flat at the top and you get there via an elevator lift, which is great. And people, um, used to always like push people off of it. It was, it was awesome. Um, the Prasad, a concentric island circle. Ooh, that's cool. I like the tropical locations. Mostly because I've got a pirate campaign on the brain. Um, meaning an island within a lake. Oh yeah, cool. And that could be inside of the ocean. So you could have a lagoon with a, a lake with an island. Oh, they exist in Ontario? That's cool. That's an exotic locale for sure. Um, there's an island that like, yeah, totally. Lagoons, ETC, could be in the ocean. Could be in the ocean, could be land locked. Who knows? That's awesome. Um, it'd be also fun if the middle, if the, like the central island of that was a dragon turtle, but just under the water was actually a dragon turtle, but under the water. And it creates natural defenses for the island, the dragon turtles back because there's, you know, floating islands. Um, a sprawling son of a sofa man, a sprawling city built on islands amid a river delta primary means of transport is a watercraft building bridges sorry bridges between islands and that's awesome i don't even I, does that exist i don't even know but that's awesome sprawling city built on islands amid a river delta also great terrain uh vocabulary mesa River Deltas, you know, fucking throw them out there, man. I saw a really cool post on Reddit about all the various kinds of topography and geography and the various vernaculars that one can use and the differences between them. It was really awesome. I wish I could pull it up. Uh, maybe I can find it. Uh, um, watercraft equals primary means of transport. Awesome. Uh, bridge, bridges between islands. Linking whole city together. Nice. Oh, is Venice built on a delta? That's cool. Um, a space station that's essentially a giant Rubik's cube. Shifts terrain every other week. Or every week. That's awesome. The idea of shifting dynamic terrain is super cool. You know? I mean, what if even the uh, the the River Delta City, its its islands started moving around? Like it, there was shifting stuff in the River Delta. What if they were all dragon turtles, and the dragon turtles were just swimming around, and there were magical bridges, and they were just transforming as and and moving around like Hogwarts stairs based on where the fucking islands were? That'd be awesome. Could the islands be? Constantly shifting with magical bridges that moved. Fuck, that is such a cool visual. Um, and Venice is awesome. It's true. Uh, giant underwater. Hi, Asher. Uh, coral formation. That's actually an ancient golem. Fuck yeah. That's awesome. Damn. 
I'm just picturing like a giant crystal, because like crystal golem is a, it's a stat block in the monster manual. And it's like basically just it's highly reflective, extremely resistant, difficult golem, but like a gigantic one that just every time that it moves, it just sort of, you know, you you just have bits of coral coming off of it that just land and then coral grows off of that coral and it leaves reefs behind it. That'd be super cool. As it walks, reefs are, uh, coral gets, uh, left behind and forms new reefs. It's fucking awesome. Oh yeah, the Prasad knows the crystal golem because he had to fight it. <laughs> he plays in one of my campaigns. Um, sorry, buddy, but you did it. You did a great job. A uh, lost treasure room that contains a genie and a lamp. Solid. Some Aladdin flair there. That's true. I've never actually played in like a, a sort of um, ancient Persia sort of campaign. That would be awesome. Uh, I would love that. I mean, you can fucking rip everything from Aladdin, right? Like the like cave entrance requires a puzzle or a special person. A diamond in the rough, you know, um, whole thing turns into a skill challenge to get out in time once you touch the treasure. That's just a cool fucking thing. We're going to rip it straight from Aladdin. Um, primordial, son of a self man says, a primordial tree of unimaginable scale in which an entire civilization dwells. Yes. So cool. And you can also imagine that they would have, um, they would have probably, you know, carved out tunnels and, and streets and levels along the trunk of the tree that are, you know, various levels of the city and, you know, further out into the branches is where all the residential stuff is, you know, and this in the center of the trunk is where all the urban stuff is. Oh, fucking awesome. Um, a primordial tree of unimaginable scale in which an entire civilization dwells nice um oh that's cool yeah where's that one uh there, 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 there it is um shifting floating islands that you have to use a harpoon yeah use harpoon launchers to uh zip line between the islands. I have to translate Root of All Beers typos. I'm, I'm getting really good at it. I speak Root of All Beers now. Now I can place the commas. I can fix the spellings like that. We're uh, we're aligning mentally. Uh, a landscape made of solid iron. Holy shit. That'd be dope. Also, if you have the heat metal spell, you can wreck, ha wreak havoc on that shit. Also, Magneto in that space. Oh my god. Um... Landscape made of solid iron. Flora, fauna, residents, all iron. And then you have, you know, cast iron people and rusted iron people that are sort of like the chaff of society, you know? Iron oxide. You bastards. Um, in the primordial tree, social classes could be divided by tree levels. Yes, 100%. That's a good idea. Where does that go? Put that there, yes. Social classes. Oh, I didn't even write down my ideas for that. Uh, social classes could be divided by tree levels. Yes. Branches could be residential while the trunk is urban. Yeah, 100%. Um, tunnels carved into solid wood. Uh, tunnels and roads. Um... Very cool. You get promoted or relegated between the levels. Could get promoted or relegated. Yes. I love it. It's awesome. If you were to be an, an organic. <laughs> yeah, everyone would just hit you and you would just be like, ow, because they're iron. Um, but if you played the long game, you cover everything in water and everyone just rusts away. You win. You win. It just takes like a couple of years. 
Um, damn, guys, look at all that shit. That has to. Oh, we're not even done. Bouncing off Sofa Man, a village made of tree houses built at the top of 300 foot redwood style trees. Yes. I like bouncing off. Bouncing off is a great term. Thank you for inventing that, Vinny. Um, we're gonna call it bouncing. We're gonna bounce off everyone else. We're gonna, it's gonna, like, the whole metaphor is gonna be elasticity and, you know, flubber. We're gonna be flubber. Um, a village made of tree houses built at the top of 300 foot style redwood trees. I love it. It'd be even cool also if it was like sort of a mangrove forest where these huge trees were in uh you know a fairly maybe like a 10 foot to 20 foot layer of water at the bottom and so um you wouldn't want to be in that water because that's where giant alligators and crocodiles and sharks and shit are um 20 to 30 20 40 foot layer of water with giant animals like crocs and sharks in it super cool um, also a really like, like a two foot layer of water just for fun with light fishing possible because that's pleasant and nice. Um, a city of, oh, son of a sofa man, a city of bone, the skeleton of a long dead giant alien creature. Hmm. Son of a sofa man likes his large elements. Did you go crazy for, uh, for, you know, like seeing the giant uh, Star Destroyer in the trailers for Force Awakens that were just like lying there on the landscape. I feel like that would have really done it for you, though, for man. Um, a city of bone, a skeleton, a long dead giant alien creature. Long dead giant alien creature. Love it. I need more energetic brainstorming music. We need any suggestions. Throw them out there. Yeah, uh, I knew you'd like that. <laughs> totally. They were awesome. They were super cool. What a cool flavor element. I don't know if you read the book that came with that, uh, that came out right before that. I think it was Lost Stars or something, but it actually describes the story of how that Star Destroyer ended up there, which is super cool. Um, go Breaker, go home. Totally. Totally. Um, fuck yeah. You guys are killing it. All of you. Awesome ideas. Um, what else we got? What else we got? I think we'll keep going for like another five minutes or something. And then after the break, we will come back and we will like take a couple of these and, or maybe we'll vote on one and we'll flesh it out and we'll just like dump all kinds of fun detail and cool, I don't know, everything. I'm super excited. Um, what else we got? What else we got? This is so much stuff. Look at this shit. I can't even fit it on one page. Like, let's just look at that. I'm still zooming out! Look at that! We're getting good at this, you guys. What if I turn this into... Numbered list. 17 ideas. We're not done yet. Let's keep going. Alright, what else we got? Um... What else, what else, what else? Um... I was gonna pull up an image that I had found. I don't know if I can still find it, but I hope I can. Uh, there it is. And the idea here was gonna be, uh, what was it? D&D, Reddit, um, be sure to scroll back up and save those imager links. Yeah, what are, what are those links for? I got them. But what are they for? I mean, I save chat anyway, but. Let's. Oops. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Just making sure I write down those links. I got it. Okay. Oh, here we go. Series of floating icebergs that are constantly breaking off each other and reforming. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, you could totally envision some kind of underwater force causing these icebergs to reform. 
and maybe even combined. Maybe even you have tribes that live on all of these icebergs, and as they split apart, residences are constantly being split from other residences. But they're kind of used to it; like they're all built that way. Um, and you're you you see villages break apart and merge, and then maybe come some people come back together again in a different way. I don't know. That's awesome. Um, underwater force causing the reformation? Question mark. Um, super cool. Super, super, super cool. Uh, what else we got? What else we got? What about like? Oh no, hang on. Uh, D and D Reddit. Um, terrain types. I feel like there must be an image for this. I definitely found one. Did I repost it? I don't think I reposted it. I think I wanted to. Uh, I don't know how to find it now. Um, terrain types, earth. Illustration. What else we got, guys? Oh, this is pretty good. Look at all this. Woo! Here we go. Can we zoom in on this? Okay, that's shitty quality, but you guys get the point. Canyons, cascades. Oh, cascade. A uh, valley, mountain peak, glacier, mountain range, river, tributary, hill, plain, relief collapse, estuary, cliff, seafront, island, ocean. And that was okay. Whoa. Look at this. Wait. Oh, wow. I was like, why is this getting smaller? Plateau, mesa, mountain, canyon, alluvial fan. That's wild. Desert pavement? Yardangs? What the hell is that? Aquifer layer? Salt pan? A butte? A rock pedestal? A wadi? An erg? A barchan? What all, what's all that shit? I don't know what that is. Uh, maybe the iceberg villagers are violent and fight each other for dominion each time they're iceberg. That's cool. Oh, that's awesome. Especially if there's like intrinsic resources connected to each one like what if every time this this underwater force caused the reformation it caused some kind of really critical resource to reappear you know like almost like air bubbles reappearing within ice and so it, there was a, a refresh basically a respawn of the valuable resources and then the moment that those icebergs touched and reformed it was like go and they were off you know fighting Iceberg villages are violent and fight each other for dominion each time their iceberg connects with another tribes. Maybe a scarce valuable resource gets refreshed when icebergs break away or reform. Edit triggers a race. Yeah, that's super cool. It reminds me of um it reminds me of um if you guys have read Stormlight Archive, uh The Way of Kings and uh Words of Radiance or and, and Oathbringer, um there's this idea of a large plain desert and it's got huge chasms within it. And within the chasms are giant creatures called chasm fiends that are a little bit like big purple worms, but maybe a little bit more leggy. Um, and there are tons and tons of kingdoms that surround this, not surround, but that are parked at the edge of this desert and they go out every whatever, like fortnight on a hunt, on a chasm fiend hunt. And the goal is to like retrieve these gem hearts that, uh, grow from within the chasm fiends. And so they go all like compete with each other to go on these chasm fiend hunts, which is, which is super cool. Um, like chasm fiend hunts from uh stormlight question mark but like an underwater creature super cool the shattered planes are so cool i oh, know shattered planes good pull good pull um reminds you of really cool mesa and plateau 
cool weapon concepts that you drew, huh? Oh, cool. I'm looking at these now. These are cool. Oh, yeah, these are fucking awesome, dude. Well done. Ooh. Those are cool. Um, city that's on top of a giant beast and the beast is informing you that the beast itself is about to die within two years and you need to find a haven before he dies. That's awesome. That's a great idea. City on top. Is there already... Did we write that down already? Is that, that that sounds familiar? I have a terrible memory. I can't find it. Whatever. Um giant beast beast is dying in a few years. Oh, okay. I'll, well, I'll find it later. Um and tells you and you must find a new place to have this city that's awesome very cool concept um sick very sick yeah like i i really i feel like people are very drawn to the idea of cities and giant beasts like what is it about that that captures our imagination is it like the mobility of those giant beasts is it the fact that uh you know this this huge entity that could kill you and destroy the city is actually allowing you to um host an entire civilization on its back like i don't know but it's super fascinating um another one i thought of just now uh is a um a sort of mutual arrangement between a gigantic jellyfish and an underwater civilization where they are allowed to have their city within its tentacles and it provides them protection and in exchange they act as lures um for other fish that would want to come and eat them and the jellyfish traps them with their tentacles just super cool um a city within a giant jellyfish mutual arrangement jellyfish protects them they lure food in for the jellyfish which of course are giant kaiju sized monsters which is great uh okay what else what else what else we've talked a lot about cities um i like these ideas also of like landscapes made of solid iron i don't know why when you said exotic locales i didn't even think of cities i thought of like Oasises or o oases, um, these like these like sort of remote locations that were exceptional in how they were formed or or how they existed. Um, uh, I don't know, I don't know, but super cool. I mean, another one is is um, I don't know, like let, let's talk about elements, right? Because it feels like a lot of these are connected to elements. So I don't know, ice, fire water oh yeah thanks for joining v prasad i appreciate it thanks Vinny. um thanks for helping us come up with some super awesome ideas it was super super fun all right let's do this let's cap it here we came up with a lot of ideas and um let's take a break we'll take a five minute break five to ten minute break and then we'll come back and we will all pick together one of these ideas or maybe two um, and we will just like, we'll go deep. We've gone super wide. And when we come back from the break, we'll go deep. And that will be a totally different kind of exercise, which will be awesome. And maybe at the end of it, we can come out with an actual finished location, which is cool. Uh, all right, let's do it. So I will see you guys. Oop, we have one more. Waterfall that falls into the sky. I love it. That's interesting just to think about the physics of it. And, you know, could you use that to power, uh, I don't know, uh, water wheels and, and have perpetual motion? I don't know. That's super cool, though. Um, all right. Let's take a break. Nobody go anywhere. We'll be right back. And we will pick one of these locations and dive into it. I'm going to leave these up here. Well, actually, you know what? Let me put... 
Why is this not public access? This whole thing should be public access. Why did it turn off? That's so dumb. That's silly. Let's give it a cool icon. All right. I would just like to give this use some imagery. Look at that. Sick. All right. So I'm going to leave these up, actually. No, I'm not going to leave them up. I'm just going to post a link to it in chat. And feel free to take a look at those. And um, if you have any that you are especially interested in delving into further, let me know after the break. I'll see you guys in a second.
I always forget to turn my mic back on. Every time. Uh, what's up, everybody? We're back. Super excited. Um, if you're joining us after the break, I'd like to let you know that we, together as a community, have come up with this giant, awesome list of exotic locales. We had a great Blue Sky brainstorm in the hour preceding. And now, together as a community, we're going to pick one of these. And we're going to... Um, we're going to dive deep. We're going to delve into one of them and really just dig into the meatiness of what's there. What kind of NPCs, what kind of cultures, what kind of detail can we put into this thing? What kind of, what is the logic of how this place works and why it exists and what's the origin of it? Um, when you go there as an adventuring party, what are you likely to experience? What are some of the challenges you will encounter? What are the, some of the cool exploration um, related mechanics you might encounter there? I don't know. But, shit, guys. This is a lot of shit. Um, tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna paste it in chat. Um. I'm gonna paste it in chat, just so you guys can... Chiggity check it out, in its entirety. Cause I don't know if I... If I zoom this out... Can you guys even see it? Is that too small? Might be too small. I'll tell you what, I turned some of these into toggles. And that'll help us collapse the bigger ones. There we go. Should be able to fit them on here now. Hopefully you can see that. Really? Oh, it's actually 500. Boo. Okay, well. Check it out. Oops. A little bit bigger. Alright, so what do we want to work on? Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's crazy how much of that stuff is just, you know, ancient hunter-gatherers making up stories about things. It's so inventive, just because they need an explanation. So, what do you guys want to work on? I mean, I'll, I'll start by flagging the ones that I think are super cool and, and might want to, you know... They're all super cool, actually, but I'll just start flagging the ones that I think are, are especially interesting to me. And I would like you guys to just let me know what's interesting to you, and we'll flag that as well. We'll just sort of narrow it down. Uh... Let's see. That's cool. Let me flag them. I'll make them a uh, different color. Yeah? Color? Yellow? Yeah. Cool. That works. Cool. Oops. Sorry. Okay. Uh... That's cool. Very cool, very cool. Oh, boiler water. Boiling water. Um What else do you guys want to work on? What what's cool from this list that we just came up with that you want to delve? Like what 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 which one of these do you read and think, man, I want to know more about that? Or which one of these creates more questions in your mind about it instead of just finishing? as an idea, you know? Um, I think this one's super cool. I think this one is awesome. I loved this idea with the moving bridges and whatnot. Um, this one is very cool. This one is super cool. I like so many of these. That was just Aladdin. Um, this one is pretty cool. I feel like I've seen versions of it. This one is so interesting. Mm, city of Bone could be cool, like a, a city of scavengers maybe. Maybe some of its meat is still there. Wow, that idea.
This one's really cool. I'm partial to mine also. And a waterfall. All right, these are the ones that I really like. What about you guys? Any votes? Any any ones that you find interesting from this list? Sorry, it's so small. I can turn some more of these into toggles. Oops. Make this a little bit bigger for you. All right. How many is that highlighted? I highlighted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten are highlighted. That's just me. City a jellyfish. Okay. We're going to mark that with a different color because it's got two votes for it. Jazz by the, the, the waterfall for sure. Like it. Also, hey, Nietzsche Power. Nice to see you. Guys, uh, Nietzsche Power is a coach at Nerd Strong Gym. He's also a dungeon master, so welcome, welcome. Roll a D10 and choose. Yeah. The jellyfish is also a cool concept. Let me give that one three. It's red now. It's like a little, little heat map. Yeah, man. Uh, I don't know if you were here in the in the first part of it, but uh, we had a ton of fun just coming up with all these concepts. All of this was generated, you know, between a basically seven, I don't know, uh, I guess like eight, ten, and eight. No, sorry, seven, ten, and and eight o'clock. Just super fun to talk about. You can't narrow this down. I know it's hard, right? Yep. We got another one for Iron Landscape and Molten. Oh, got it, got it, got it. So this one becomes red as well. Um, and then another one for the Iron Landscape. Where's that one go? There it is. Turn that one red as well. Icebergs would be fun too. Cool. Give that one a second. Or a first, I guess. Um like the bone thing where's the bone thing okay cool that's got two sure 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 uh okay so let's let's narrow it down here um i'm not obviously not, obviously not gonna delete any of these these are fucking gold um but we're gonna make give this a section we'll say initial blue sky brainstorm and then we're going to make another section, which is deep dive. So we have these two. Okay, we're going to pick from these three now. I want to have you guys vote. Okay. Turn into numbered list. Okay. Uh, everyone who's here in chat, uh, cast your votes. One vote each. Which one should we dive into deeply? Remember, we're going to be working on who lives there? Why is it there? What are the origins of it? What kind of exploratory encounters can a party have there? What kind of narratives might we find there? What kind of peoples are there? Um, what kind of monsters live in and around that location? There's so much to dive into in one of these locations. It's going to be super fun. Um, so vote one, two, or three. One is the city within a giant jellyfish. Two is a waterfall that falls into the sky. Uh, three, a landscape made of solid iron. Here's some votes. Got one vote for one. Uh, that's the best way to keep track. I'll just say one. Uh, I think I will wait to cast my vote. Once I have heard from all of you. So Root of All Beers, Son of a Sofa Man, Vic Migs. I want to hear those votes. What do you guys want to work on? This is not easy. I know, they're all really cool. Uh, Ancient Turtle votes number two. Vic Mig votes number three, you bastards. Now we have one each. Oh, <laughs> no, you got to vote, man. We need, 
We need to break this tie. This is horseshit. Son of a self, man. You got to make some decisions in life, man. You got to do it. You got to pick. You got to commit. Running out of running out of time. A three-way campaign. No, I don't want to pick. Ugh, okay, fine. Just because we got to move on to brainstorming, I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick... I I'm picking jellyfish. I think jellyfish is super fucking cool. What if you roll a four? There's a flawed system, Rudevall Pierce. No! Okay. We've got... We've got two for this. Two for this. I cast my vote with the jellyfish one. Fuck it. We need a tiebreaker. Vic Migs, come and save us. Come and save us. Waterfall or City with a Giant Jellyfish? You gotta pick. What is this song? Alright. That's it. We're gonna flip a coin. We're just gonna flip a fucking coin. Heads, it's the jellyfish. Tails, it's the waterfall in the sky. No, you know what? I'm the streamer. I can make a. I can make an executive decision. Also, Rudolph Beers voted with a dice roll. And I voted by choice. So, we're gonna go with City within a Giant Jellyfish. Let's fucking do it. Oh, vote for a jelly. Done. Three to two. All right. Perfect. Um, I love all these ideas. I just want to say that. All of these are super cool. I'm going to keep them in, in this wiki. Obviously, you guys can access it. Uh, it's publicly available. If you scroll down, there's a link to it in the handy link, sec link section. We're going to keep those there. And we're going to just dive into one of these right now. So let's do it. All right. So. The Jellyfish City. Alright. So. Um, this is... Maybe let's try something we haven't done a lot of on this um, community workshop. Which is let's try and like hone down now. So let's try and come up with um, ideas that make a little bit more sense. Although I think all of the things that you guys said earlier had had a good amount of sense to them. There weren't you know, a ton of nonsensical ideas. Um... But let's try and think logically about this location. So, again, to recap this idea, the idea is that there is a, a giant gargantuan jellyfish within the ocean, and there is a civilization of peoples living within them. Um, and the idea is that they offer mutual protection to each other. One of them, the jellyfish, provides protection um, in the form of its stingers, its giant tree sized stingers or bigger skyscraper sized stingers um and the people lure food in for the jellyfish so that's what we've got um what do you guys think the way uh i feel like the symbiotic relationship between the residents and the jellyfish itself is integral to the existence of both parties yeah i totally agree so let's talk about that let's talk about the i'm just gonna write that idea down Entrances in the mouth. Yeah, that's like the secret. The secret entrance. Everyone else tries to like swim through the tentacles. Um, so so I'm gonna put some some categories here. Does the jellyfish age and die? That's a good question. That's something that um, Rudival Beer said earlier was uh, you know this idea of a beast that hosts a city, and after a certain amount of time the host is going to die and they need to transition. Um, in this case, that might yield a very interesting adventure. Uh, if a party was to come upon this civilization right as they were transitioning from one jellyfish into the other, something that happens once in a generation, perhaps. It's like every generation has to deal with this um, upending of what they know is safe. And they have to make their journey from one jellyfish to another, maybe not even knowing where another one of these jellyfish might be and not knowing what dangers uh, they might find along the way would be super cool. Um, death. So jellyfish death. Um, or it could be an eternally living jellyfish. I mean, jellyfish are constantly, um, I don't know all jellyfish, but some jellyfish have the ability to die and essentially rebirth themselves from the same small organism. So they actually like they die and they shrink back down to their their larval form. I don't know if that's correct, but like and they come back. Yeah, they were they revert back into infancy. That's that's right. So that's a pretty 
that's a potentially interesting concept here. Um, like it, they, the civilization raises the jellyfish, and as it grows, it starts to protect them, and then it comes back down to infancy. That'd be pretty cool. Has to find a new one once in a generation. Braving all kinds of dangers along the way. Um, what are your thoughts, son of a sofa man, on the mutual arrangement? Let me let me let me start by this. Let's. I want to put a list up of 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 sort of overarching headers, right? So like the people who live there. Who are they? Uh, the the residents. What are they like? Um, I want to know about, uh, surrounding monsters. I want to know about, um, the, uh, the mutual arrangement, the symbiotic arrangement. What else do we want to know about it? What, what are some of like other broad categories that we want to fill out? The party that gets devoured finds the city. Totally. Especially if the entrance is through the mouth, like Revolve Beers was saying. They think they're being eaten by this kaiju-sized thing, and it turns out... Oh, welcome to our home. That's cool. Are they merfolk? I don't know. That's a good question. Tritons? That's interesting. Why can't it be parasitic? It could totally be parasitic. 100%. Hey, Chase Gallows. Thanks for the follow. Much appreciated. Um, interesting. Interesting. Do they live in the dark or bioluminescent lighting? Oh, totally bioluminescent lighting. 100%. Uh, which brings me to, you know, terrain features. Bioluminescence. Lighting. It even cycles, maybe. So they have a day and they have a night. It's this, the, the jellyfish itself has cycles. Um, maybe they're not exactly, they don't fit day and night because there's no light, you know, that far underwater, but between bright and dim. Um, categorize some of these. This is a terrain feature as well. Um, Origin and destruction. Is there a cool origin story? How did how did how did these peoples begin their um, life in this jellyfish? How did they have the idea to do this? Why did the jellyfish allow it? I don't know. That's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, it could totally be parasitic. So this is the symbiotic version. What's the parasitic version? Oh, the residents keep the jellyfish alive. Oh wait, sorry, there's more. Uh, it slowly kills the jellyfish every 200 years and hops on to one of its 2,000 offspring. Yeah, totally, that's awesome. Uh, residents slowly kill jellyfish. Ooh, what a, um, a metaphor for what we're doing to the planet, you know? Although in this case, the planet doesn't have 2,000 offspring that we can easily access. Um, every generation for a few generations and rebuild on one of its offspring. It's fascinating. It's possible it's both. Like Son of a Sofa Man said, it is killing them slowly. They are consuming its resources, um, but it's also luring the food. Um, yeah, their waste is... Oh, that's such a good idea. Their waste is mildly toxic and it's keeping the jellyfish sedated. That's smart. Uh, resident waste is slightly toxic, keeping the jellyfish sedated. That's really interesting. In fact, it makes you think of... <laughs> pretty sure a jellyfish's anus is right in the center of its bubble, so obviously a central terrain feature. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. It's where the treasury is. It's where they keep their valuables. You know, the deepest part. 
Um, I'm going to remove that. The jellyfish can always change its... Really? Its mouth is its anus? Wow. But actually, if if its, if its ingestion point is also its... Whatever the opposite of ingestion is. Defecation point. What does that mean? What does it mean when something eats with its... The thing that it poops with? I don't know. That's fascinating. Like, fun facts. Maybe it's useful. I might move it. The jellyfish mouth is the same as its anus. Which makes sense. It's the entrance and exit point. Also the safe entrance and exit point. Tight. I'm going to carry this note over here. End up in a civilization. Now, of course, D and D is all about magic. So, what are the you know the effects of magic on this terrain? Are the residents surviving because they can survive underwater, but they're actually more land creatures, or are they, you know, um, what's what's the magical effect here? I don't know. Jellyfish itself is completely brainless. The only muscles twitch and keep the heart beating. Yeah, it's true. The entire religious structure of the society should be centered around this. Does the jellyfish accept the sacrifice or not? Good question. That would be cool. 100%. I mean, the question is, is the jellyfish the deity? Or is the jellyfish just like a, a demigod? You know? It's fascinating. Monoorphous organism. Wild. Um, I love this song, by the way. Dragon Roost Island. Primo Zelda music. Um, does the jellyfish accept the sacrifice or not? Maybe there's a, a, a correlation to the magic, I'd, the magic stuff as well. You know, maybe part of what they're doing is they are taking pieces slowly from the jellyfish and turning them into, um, the, uh, the larva or the, the sort of like core that they're going to grow their next jellyfish out of. And it's a very, very valuable thing. Which is interesting. Um, they slowly keep taking from its it's interesting. Um, yeah, what is the religious sort of note here that's interesting um yeah again like is the deity the jellyfish or or is it that jellyfish are you know like children or sub um subservient to the deity or given by the deity I don't know. Would they even have warfare? That's interesting. If you had multiple civilizations lived living in these jellyfish, you could do it twice. You could do it... Well, fuck. This is a great question. Warfare. And I missed a thing. Um, maybe the jellyfish migrates to warm waters in the cold months and has to cooler water in the warmer months. Carrying its inhabitants, allowing them to trade with people in distant lands. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I'll put that here. The jellyfish migrates between cold and warm waters, allowing for trade. We'll put this in foreign affairs or something. I don't know. That's fine. They can be under this. That's interesting. What do we think the race is going to be? I think that will help drive a lot of our conversation. Do we think merfolk? Do we think tritons? Do we think something else? Maybe the jellyfish has air bubbles that, you know, they stay within. I don't know. Um, would they even have warfare?
New race could be cool. New race could be awesome. I want to hear about it. What's that new race look like? The warfare is interesting because they could you could do one of two things. You could either say that multiple civilizations or villages live within a single jellyfish and they fight over you know, land or essentially tentacle space. Multiple societies within a single jellyfish fighting for resources or or the crazier thing is you have a single jellyfish society pair but because of their control over the jellyfish they can get the jellyfish to fight and they can help which would be cool um Maybe the use of magic by the inhabitants is what's toxic to the jellyfish. That's very possible. Toxic to the jellyfish over time. That's interesting. Um, it would be cool if the city was lit up by the jellyfish's bioluminescence. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Got that here. And, and I think it would be cool if it cycled between being bright and being dim. So you kind of had day-night cycles as well. Um, also, welcome to the stream, uh, Noah. Are there multiple jelly jellyfish colonies or is this unique in the world? That's a good question. I don't know. I mean, I think it kind of depends on what you won't want in your campaign, but I like the idea of multiple. I like the idea of this race, whatever it is, or, you know, at least this manifestation of this race in this area of the ocean has come to, um, uh, this is the way that they live. This is the way they survive. They, they're not strong on their own if they were left in open water, but their mastery of these jellyfish is what gives them their survivability. Um, I think. It'd be cool. Uh, and that allows for this multiple jellyfish to fight each other for resources thing, which is fucking dope. Um, Kuoto would be a cool race to live there. Oh, totally. I forgot about that. That's a good one. It's totally a good one. And, and that totally plays into the whole, like, too weak to really survive on your own, you know, kind of thing. Um, if the society has natural isolation, would the society even be aware of other races? It's true, I don't know. I mean, if we do this migration between cold and warm waters thing, allowing for trade, I like that. Um, I think that's cool. It's cool to be able to, you know, I, I like that because it allows the party to hear about these mysterious people who show up once a year or twice a year in a location to trade on the backs of a giant jellyfish. Um, or maybe they don't even know about the jellyfish because the jellyfish doesn't come out of the water, obviously. Um, or maybe it does, like a Portuguese man of war, where you can sort of see the top bubble of that thing, and it's actually got, like, giant tentacles below it. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, that's totally possible as well. Thanks for the follow, Noah. Nice to see you. Um... No concept of warfare at all. That's true. I mean, if they if they were so well protected by this jellyfish that they just never had to fight anybody, they'd be like, what? Why would we do that? Why would we have weapons? We don't need that shit. And then that creates a cool encounter where all of a sudden the party maybe has to save them from a force that is able to penetrate the jellyfish defenses. And now they have to like figure out how to use the jellyfish itself or augment what the jellyfish has. Perhaps because the jellyfish protection has been so effective. That's cool. Yeah, definitely interesting. Um, their equipment would have a plus one to plus two to poison damage. That makes total sense. Total sense. Um, natural poison resistance as well um equipment or weapons could have a natural easily gotten plus one plus two poison damage or just a poison damage bonus they just like stick the weapon 
in the jellyfish tentacles. It doesn't notice. It's too big. Poisoned. The inhabitants could use its venom as a weapon. True. Very true. It'd be so interesting also to think about not just like their own weapons, but also what what weapons of the jellyfish can be manipulated by this society. You know, like, can they get the jellyfish to shoot its stingers? Can they get the jellyfish to um, curl its tentacles in a particular way? Can they actually, like, man the tentacles? Or the smaller ones, at least? I don't know. Um, wow, this is a really cool song. i add this. Um, manipulate jellyfish itself. Manning its tentacles or shooting its stingers. Um, or the party accidentally teaches them about the concept of warfare and causes the first war. Fuck yeah! Yes, I like that. The party potentially introduces this concept to them, triggering the first war between them and another. Oh, well, yeah. That's interesting. Would the jellyfish have predators? Maybe a kraken? Yeah, that would be cool. What if also the various jellyfish societies had to work together to fend off a kraken? I don't know. That's really interesting. Um, natural predator, a kraken. Or maybe the benefit that the villagers have or the residents have is that they are uh, smart enough to utilize the jellyfish to manipulate it into being a more effective defender um, than it normally would on its own. So jellyfish that don't have residents get eaten by the Kraken. Jellyfish that do have residents are able to develop a strategy, whether that strategy is allying with other jellyfish tribes or manipulating the jellyfish itself or creating their own weapons using their own magic. I don't know. Effective magic. Um, um, use their magic to defend against the jellyfish natural predators. That could be cool. We'll add that into the symbiotic arrangement as well. Their magic protects the jellyfish against its natural predator, against kraken predators. That's super cool. Um, what kind of monsters would be around in this area? You know, let's say the party is helping with something. Let's say the party is investigating the area. Aside from the jellyfish themselves. Uh, well, also, just first of all, monsters. Jellyfish that are not sedated by the toxins slash magic of a tribe. That would be, they're just angry. They're like natural predators. How would the society treat uh, criminals? I don't know. I have to get going. Got to drive. Oh yeah, of course, man. Thank you so much for dropping by. Um, I hope that it, it was it was cool. I hope that you had a good time just dropping ideas in. I loved hearing all that stuff. So thank you for dropping by. I appreciate it. Um, how would the society treat illithid underwater illithid? That'd be cool. Swimming illithid. Um, absolutely. I had a great time. Uh, make sure you come back on uh, Friday afternoon. 12 o'clock. We do it again. We'll have some fun. Um, how would the society treat criminals? Hmm. Interesting. It's what if they just literally like your punishment was you are going to get one exiled. So you no longer have the protection of the jellyfish, in which case the surrounding monsters that we're talking about right now would fuck you. Or um you are basically sacrificed to the anus of the jellyfish or you're sacrificed to um like an inner tentacle that they don't have resistance against or something like that you know um criminals are exiled and left to the mercy of the ocean 
or a sacrifice to the jellyfish for nourishment? It's a good one. It's a good question. What other kind of monsters would be in this area? I don't know. I'm thinking, I mean, dragon turtles, of course. Turtles eat jellyfish, y'all. I totally forgot. That makes total sense. Uh, party is like helping jellyfish society out with something and boom, dragon turtle tries to eat the jellyfish. Help, 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 help. Um, what other giant, obviously Kraken. This is super cool. I love this. What a fucking cool thing. What are some unanswered questions? Sea goats? What the hell are sea goats? Is that a thing? Is that a D&D &D thing or a real thing? I'm, we're going to find out. Those jerks eat anything. What the hell are sea goats? Oh, I have seen this. Like a Capricorn? Kind of, right? I'll throw it in there. I don't care. Wow, look at this fucking thing. Who the hell thought of this? An idiot. That's who... No, I'm just kidding. Giant goblin shark. That's what I'm talking about. Just giant sharks. Fuck yeah. You just made that up without knowing about that? <laughs> yeah, sea goats, uh, now that you say it, Capricorn. My mom's a Capricorn. She's a sea goat. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry, mom. I don't mean that. Hope you're not watching. Um. Yeah, no, wait, no. Now I kind of need to like look up more detail about this. First of all, let's look up what a goblin shot looks like because it's terrifying probably. Goblin shark. Oh, gross. Ooh. That's fucking terrifying, dude. Why are they so fucking scary looking? Oh, God. Dude, I don't know about you guys, but sharks make me... Like, seeing a shark's mouth freaks me the fuck out. Uh, What's a Capricorn? No. Okay, we're gonna go sea goat instead. A legendary aquatic animal described as a creature that is half goat and fish. Origin is not entirely known. Created by Kronos. Clever. Speak and dearly beloved by the gods. Dwell on the seashore. But once they made it onto land, they automatically transformed into normal goats. Of course. Fucking mermaid goats. Wild. Oh, Jewish oral history sea goats are exist as well. Ooh, Leviathan. I mean, this is basically a kraken, but fascinating. Leviathans. Grilled shark. I've never had grilled shark, actually. Um, I don't know what the texture is like, but it's interesting. These are cool monsters, for sure. Um, also, tritons and or merfolk that are constantly trying to steal resources produced by the jellyfish, like it's venom, for example. Um, I think it'd be really cool if, like, the clothing... Or the weapons could actually be made out of the, the, the flesh of the jellyfish that give it this kind of unique property. Um, clothing looks unique and naturally billowy because it's made of the jellyfish's flesh. It's like outer skin layer. It's... Uh, Derm, derma, something, something. It's true. It's true. I know, Leviathan's kind of a broad term, but I also feel like Leviathan evokes a certain quality, and any creature that falls within 
Leviathan would work. Uh, what else, guys? What what else do we need to know about? What other questions do we have about this society? You know, giant sea snakes. I'm gonna add that in too. Um, this is super cool. This is so fucking cool. I love it. What else? What else? What else? What else? Hmm. So let's talk about the like sort of larger sort of categories here, right? So we have talked about residents. So let me make this full width. There we go. We've talked about residents. We've talked about um well well uh to sort of lean into residents and religion a little bit, what are some of the strange rituals that this society might have? You know, obviously we've talked about potentially a migration from one jellyfish to another once every generation. I, I love that idea. Um, we've talked about, you know, um, warfare being a strange concept to these, to these guys. What else? What else is like an interesting ritual or belief that these, that these residents might have? Um, I don't know. What other categories do we need for this thing? Hmm. It's interesting. Okay, let's do one thing. Now that we're, we're, you know, about 10 minutes away from the end of the stream, let's take our ideas and let's sort of like fit the pieces together to make something complete. So, you know, of the options that we've generated for these subcategories, let's pick one of the options and pick options that sort of like work with each other to form a completed idea that anybody could take and stick into their game. The Odyssey thing? What Odyssey thing? Sacrifice, sacrifice, yeah. Um, ritualistic sacrifice to the jellyfish or to surrounding leviathans to keep their home safe. Absolutely. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to start tagging ideas with color that I think we should lock in. And I want you guys to do, you know, mention ideas that you think we should lock in as well. And we'll start to sort of work it out together. Um, let's let's lock in, I don't know, I think Merfolk makes sense. Let's do it. Well, actually, I like the idea of Kuotoa because they're a little bit more helpless. Um, and, uh, or, or actually, I like the idea of, let's do Merfolk. And then Tritons can be the external more intelligent civilization that they're warring against, potentially. So we'll just mark it orange. You know what, mark it yellow. It's easier. Merfolk. I love this idea. I think that's a lock. For show. Sure. Uh, I think that's a lock. I think... <laughs> that's a lock. Well, between being left to the mercy of the ocean or sacrificing it to the jellyfish for nourishment, what do you think? I don't know. I think... I think I think it's terrifying to be sacrificed to the mercy of the ocean. <laughs> there is, uh, what if the jellyfish was a Charybdis scenario and the city inside the jelly are but just scavengers? What does that mean? Charybdis. Sounds very familiar. Oh, yeah. The whirlpool. Fuck, wild, man. Passage between the two monsters. Oh, Charybdis and Skyla? Skilla? Sailors who tried to get to one... To avoid one monster would get into the reach of the other. Huh, <laughs> that's fucking awesome. Swallow large amounts of water. I want to see nothing about scavengers. Give me a source on that. I want to see what that is. Um, yep. Basically, anything that doesn't have another option to it, we're just going to lock it in. Um, and we'll put a note at the top that's like, uh, yellow, 
characteristics were chosen over complete usable idea over their alternatives. Block. Cool. Um, a ritualistic sacrifice to the jellyfish. Yeah, I like that. Uh, what about deity? Do we think that the deity should be the jellyfish, or do we think they should pray to something else and the jellyfish is sort of given to them? It's like a boon. I think it should be a boon given by the deity. You know, like the ocean is the deity. Who is a manifestation of the ocean. The deep sea. Um, yeah, I think so too. I think so too. Um, it'd be even cool to think that like these people have deep sea as their deity and light sea, not light sea, shallow sea is a different deity and they don't like each other. It'd be interesting. Odds with the god Des of the Shallow Sea. No, like the tab inhabitants with the jellyfish are stranded because they're watercraft. Oh, that's a cool idea. Fuck, man. I'm gonna save that one till the end. I'm gonna put that option here. We've already sort of dealt with that section, but I think that's a really cool one. I'll make sure people know about that option. I guess that would actually be in mutual arrangement no origin be the origin um peep uh since ancient memory they have always lived inside a jellyfish a gift of their god or alternatively they were stranded there by a Charybdis type sea monster who sucked them into the depths where they found shelter in its tentacles or its stingers. That's cool. Clock Town. Love this song. Hearted. Um, yeah, that makes total sense. Makes total sense. All right. Um, so for warfare, what do we like? Do we like that there are multiple within a single jellyfish or there are a single society and jellyfish fight each other or there's no concept of warfare at all? I, I lean towards, well, I think absolutely a natural predator should be the Kraken. Require active defense. The jelly cannot provide on its own. How big is the population of a single jellyfish? That's a good question. I don't know. It could be anything. I think it wouldn't be a big city. I think it would be like a tribe. You know, it'd be like less than 100 people, I think. What do you think? Your thoughts? Yeah. It's hard to see hundreds of thousands in a jellyfish. It does. You're totally right. It could be like the biggest fucking jellyfish in the world. Um, I personally like the idea of not that many people. I like the idea of multiple jellyfish floating around in this area. Um, some warring, some collaborating, like you're saying. It's very possible. Less than a thousand people, possibly less than a hundred. Or splinter factions that rode their own jellyfish into a new village. Tribe. Sizes could definitely vary, 100%. I think between 100 and 1,000 makes sense. Because 100 gives you enough to like defend and feed and have all the functions that a, that a tribe would have. It's not like five people. Um, but, you know, 1,000 still keeps it within... It, it's not like they've got, you know, really large functioning governments and whatever. You know, Town Hall is inside the jellyfish's anus. I don't know, maybe. Um, 
That's a, yeah, that's a good point. Some jellyfish are old and established with larger pops. Some are younger with fewer and established. Yeah, that's cool. Between 100 and 1,000. Residence per jellyfish. That's cool. Um, yeah, I, I personally really like this one right here. I think that's cool. Uh, surrounding monsters, I mean, I think all of these work. There's no reason to cut any of them. That's a, a multi-option for sure. Um, mutual arrangement. Oh, whoa, I think my night shift just, just turned on. I'm going to turn that off. Okay. Um, what do we think? Symbiotic, parasitic, both? Technically, all of these could be true, right? Why not? If it's anything that doesn't work, now is the time to say it. You know, that doesn't make sense because of this. This is a good time to sort of call out the ideas that don't that don't really make sense. But I think all of those work. Uh Bilutin Lesson Nighting. Fuck yeah, that's super cool. Oops. Uh <laughs> Sure, why not? Entrance and exit through the butthole. Um I'm in love with this idea, so I'm just gonna keep it. I can. Um, I think both of these are cool. I, I can't decide between one of these two. What do you guys think? Um, no, you think it shouldn't be parasitic at all? You think it should just be totally symbiotic? Also, between these two that I've highlighted, you know, it could either be we have lived here in this jellyfish since the beginning of time, our ancestors, blah, blah, blah. Or it could be what, you know, Rival Beer said, which is, we've just been here for 50 years. We were lost. I don't know. I think uh, some of the other things wouldn't be quite as possible. Like the whole, you know, finding a new one every generation or whatever, if it was that. So just because of compatibility, I'll go, I'll go with this one. Um, but I think anyone who wants to can pick this one up as well. I think that's a perfectly valid idea, which a couple of tweaks uh, up top. Um, and I actually think both of these could be true as well. Cool. Well, fuck, man. It's 9.03. We're just about at the end of our stream, and we have a fully functional... Can probably drop it in the game with a couple of, you know, additional things fleshed out. Some tweaks for your own campaign. But we have it. The Jellyfish City. What's a cooler name for it? Do we have a cooler name for it than the Jellyfish City? Last thing we want to do is name it. What do we want to do? I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to actually change the the list here and say of exotic locales. And I'm going to say exotic locale. Oops. Fourth organisms would survive longer in a symbiotic. Yeah, it would be more stable. That's true. Instability of a parasitic relationship would create interesting conflict. I agree. I, I mean, I'm just going to leave that up to you guys. You know, whatever you think is more interesting. Um, it could definitely vary. Absolutely. It could also vary based on the nature of the jellyfish. Um, maybe, or just on the nature of the tribe. Maybe some tribes choose not to use the parasitic stuff. They don't get as, they don't get ahead. You know, you always have the ambitious civilizations and the ones that are at more peace with their surroundings, right? Like sort of Native American versus, uh, you know, uh, European kind of vibe, right? Like I'm going to use up everything I've got here and I'm going to really drive my civilization forward. Or, you know, I understand what it takes to be sustainable and ensure that the thing that I'm living with is is going to survive as well because I rely on it and it relies on me. But... 
what do we want to call it? Um, the jellyfish city, the city of jellyfish. No, the city of jellyfish is just a bunch of jellyfish living with another jellyfish. Yeah, for sure. You can write that down. Um, level of symbiosis versus parasitism varies based on ambition of tribe living within it. Um, Chrysara, that's cool. It's a cool name. I want a name, though, that like people can look at in the list and know exactly what that is, you know? So something like the jelly, the, the, the city of jellyfish or whatever. Not the key city of jellyfish, the jellyfish city. Um, just like a, a name that, you know, Yeah, that makes sense. I think that should actually be the name of the of the thing of the of the civilization. Like, you could even say the race is Chrysara. Like, it's a custom variant of of Merfolk. That could be cool. Um, we'll just put like associated names. Yeah, I should have made that clear. Not just not just the act. We should have actually. You're right. We should have actually named this phenomenon in the world. Sara could be the entire concept. It's a cool name. Ain't got no other name, so lock it in. Well, actually, I meant I just meant like, what do we call this this article? It's less of a city and more of like a tribal thing, you know? Tribes who lived within a jelly. Just like something that like will quickly be a good name for this article. We'll just call it the Jellyfish Tribes. fine with me. I know it doesn't have a ring to it, but it's fine. This is just for the article name, just so people know in the, uh, in the, uh, this guy what it is, you know, so they can quickly go and look if they're looking at this as a resource. But I, I like your name great. I think that's fucking awesome. Jelly Tribes. That could just be people who are made out of jelly. The Jelly Tribes. I like it. Well, fuck, guys. This is awesome. We're just about at the end of a stream, but look at this. We have a fully fleshed out idea for an exotic locale. This is awesome. I will absolutely be stealing this for a campaign that I do. I've been... I've had my eye on a pirate campaign for a long time. I think this would be a super cool excursion for a, a pirate uh, party. A deep dive into jellyfish societies? Yes. Yes, it is. You can leave now. Just kidding, don't leave. We did it! Exotic locale, tribes in giant jellyfish. I'm also gonna add a note to this one, which is like, also see inside for a list of All this detail. You think so? Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're correct. Let's do that. We can call this...
This is super cool. I totally, totally agree. Is there a jellyfish? No, there isn't. What's... We need an emoji for jellyfish. Mmm... I think the best we're gonna get is, like, an octopus or something. Yeah, we'll go with that. Change cover. Jellyfish! Oh, yeah. Too cool. A balloon. Yep, that could work too. Uh, page, exotic, locale, brainstorm. Boom. Got it right there. We'll expand all of these so people can see. And we're going to change... Yeah, we'll leave the coloring there. Um, colors were to denote votes by the community for what to deep dive into. Ultimately, we decided on... Giant Jellyfish Villages. Woohoo! Color palette. Awesome. Now, of course, we have to do the last couple things. One is this is should be our exotic locale again. I'm gonna switch these back. Exotic. Perfect. Okay. Um, as usual, I want to put in a con contributors list. So we've got a lot of people here. We've got um, Uch to Noah. We've got uh, son of uh, oh, son of Sofa Man. We had uh, Nietzsche Power. I'll have to go spell that later. We had Vic Migs. We had V Prasad. What was uh? Oh man, we had a lot of people. Guys, this is super cool. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had a ton of fun. I know you guys did too. Well, I hope you guys did too. <laughs> Root of all beers, of course. Uh, we also had Ancient Turtle. Welcome back to the stream. Glad to have you back. Um, and uh, who else? I'm probably missing some folks. I think Asher Vo as well was here. Yep. And I'll copy this. And I will make sure that the other one has it as well. Contributors. Guys, super cool. Handshake. Handshake emoji. Well done. I would shake your hands if I could. A job well done. A job well done. Love it. Woo! Look at that shit! Well, just to close out for the night, um... First of all, this was super fun. Thank you again for reminding me why I'm doing this. This is amazing. I had so much fun last time and so much fun this time. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Remember um, that the ethos of this is all about creating together, being collaborative together and learning how to do that. Flexing that creativity muscle, flexing that muscle with other people, being open to others' ideas, bouncing off each other's ideas and feeling expired. It's all about that. Um, I don't think our ideas would have been half as good if we had tried to do this on our own. And I think this is so much cooler and came together so much faster because all of our brains were firing on all cylinders as we did this together. So thank you so much. Take a look at the power of collaborative creativity and what you were able to come up with in such a short amount of time. We did this in two hours. And really, we did this in like an hour, um, this part of it. So I think it just speaks to the power of of collaborative creativity and, and how much we can do together. Yeah, it would absolutely take way more time. So um, that was awesome. I will make sure the links for this are available in Twitch chat. Uh, sorry, not in Twitch chat, in um, in the panels below the stream. 
Um, and thank you so much for joining me. We'll be doing this again uh, Friday, uh, 12 o'clock PST, lunchtime stream. I hope you all can join us. If not, no worries. Um, and I'm just super excited to see what everybody continues to come up with. So think about what you want to work on next time. If you got something already in the works that you want some feedback on, or if you want to just do something new, um, it'll be super great. All right, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this is me signing off for tonight. I don't think I have any, you know, announcements or anything, but, um, give us a follow if you haven't already. We're at 40. We're trying to get to 50. We're almost there. I will see you on Friday. Have a good night, everybody. Good job today. <laughs>